Destin here for IGN Live at Gamescom 2017. I'm here with Deej talking Destiny 2. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm great because I can finally talk about being at Bungie, playing the EDZ, checking it out. Tell us about this location. Uh, the European Dead Zone. It is the biggest destination that we've ever created for an adventure set in the world of Destiny. Uh, mm -hmm. There's tons to do, there's tons to explore. Uh, you're gonna find mysterious forests, you're gonna find the ruins of a golden age civilization mm -hmm. uh, that's shattered but still somehow beautiful as nature reclaims those environments. And of course it's filled with bad guys, it's filled with mystery, it's filled with treasure for you to claim, mm -hmm. uh, it's filled with fallen pikes that you can commandeer if you can uh, be skilled enough to sharpshoot the original pilot out of the controls. That's right, and right now we're actually looking at a public event next to a lost sector. There's a logo right there. But uh, they're trying to actually, the fallen here are trying to steal glimmer mm -hmm. from the planet mm -hmm. and we are stopping them. And uh, I'm taking out that node at the top there to try and trigger the heroic version of this encounter. That's one way public events has changed, right? Yep, yep, you still find the Filthy scavengers, the fallen, <laughs> are still on Earth. We have yet to eradicate them from the face of our rightful homes. So you're going to find them in the European dead zone, along with other enemies that will be formidable and challenge your ability to survive and to prosper. But uh, this is a awesome environment. Look at that. There's a was that a Cabal that Interceptor for just one split second? Maybe, so, maybe. Yeah, so there's plenty to do here. Like you just said, uh, we've got an icon on the screen for a treasure chest. We've got a public event in session with a heroic modifier. We've got new matchmaking to bring you into contact with more players. Of course, you played this in a controlled environment. This wasn't, mm -hmm. uh, this wasn't live, this wasn't beta. This was uh, you, know, you and a, a group of esteemed guests who were uh, getting just a taste of yeah. what it's like to explore a destination in Destiny. And European Dead Zone is... It looks a, beautiful. It's a cool place, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, really, I really like moving through this environment and mm -hmm. there's a lot to do. Like you said, there's a lost sector right here in this space. Yeah. Uh, there are adventures that you can embark on. Obviously, there are story campaign missions that will shape the experience. So. As promised, as suggested on a couple of other occasions, mm -hmm. uh, Destiny is a game that has a very wide variety of things to do. Uh, we're gonna bring you into contact with your friends, we're gonna bring you into contact with players you've never met before, mm -hmm. we're going to tell you stories, we're gonna introduce you to characters, we're gonna give you secrets and mysteries that you can plunder, mm -hmm. we're gonna give you public events. Um, there's just a whole lot more ways to explore this environment. Having played it and getting stuck down here, as I did in this gameplay that you're seeing, uh, there is just there. There really is a ton to do. You can be doing a public event. You can uh, hop into a lost sector while that's loading because you can actually queue up at flags and stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, one thing I have to ask is, you brought up you're running into Cabal, and there's actually Taken on this planet, as we might see before the end of the interview, but. Um, how do you balance that out, having so much going on? Because it's, it, it might be overwhelming to some players, mm -hmm. having mm -hmm. so many options. Well, and the thing is that we are giving players options. So if you're overwhelmed, you can always sort of go off the beaten path, mm -hmm. and you can just look around at the scenery, and you can shoot the ambient enemies that you're going to find in those spaces. Uh, you've got these new systems in the game that allow you to choose your level of engagement. You rallied to the banner here to join this public event. Yeah. Not everyone has to. You can make your way through the destination. You can shoot the bad guys as you find them. You can loot the treasure chests as you discover them. You can go down into the lost sectors or not. You can try to accomplish that heroic modifier for the public event or not. Or yeah. you can just focus on my next story mission. You know, my imagination has been hooked. I want to know what happens to the last safe city on Earth. I'm going to blaze that trail as quickly and efficiently as possible, and that's what I'm all about. So Destiny 2 can be a game that is as explosive or contemplative as you want it to be. It's really... Look at that guy. Uh, it's really a matter of <laughs> what you want to get out of it. So that's yeah, your so wretch captain right there. Look, yeah. at all the, look at all that glimmer. Look yeah, at that. So actually, this is uh, what happens once you destroy all the glimmer extracting devices. You actually trigger the heroic version, and this big guy shows up to try and stop you from yep. allowing them to steal the glimmer. We actually managed to take him down. You get rewarded more XP, and what sort of... Uh, what sort of stuff, what sort of loot do you get in mm. Destiny 2 when you complete the harder version mm. of the game? This is where it gets difficult, man. <laughs> this is where it gets difficult. Destiny is a couple of weeks out from launching, mm -hmm. and you know the path of the warrior, you know, your your act of becoming a legend, you know, new legends will rise, we've said. Yeah. And 
that progression, that adventure, uh, the way that you go from being the character who limps away from the attack against our last safe city and becomes, you know, the the all-powerful guardian at the top of its potential, mm -hmm. all maxed out and all bristling with interesting new weapons and gear is the sort of thing that we want players to discover as part of the journey. So, as we can see here, there is a ton of loot, yes. there's tons of glimmer, and the promise I would want to make to the players of Destiny is that Destiny 2 is a more rewarding game than ever. That mm -hmm. was our goal. Uh, I've been telling uh, my peers at Bungie all summer long, let's state our goals. Instead of giving people a, a, a rigid expe ex expectation for exactly how all this is going to play out, we collect our loot, mm -hmm. we've got some armor, you have a token, uh, you know, you'll meet the people that will accept those tokens to give you better stuff. Yeah. And understanding all of these things is really part of the journey. Mm -hmm. And we want to make sure that everything that you commit to, whether it's a public event, uh, diving into a lost sector, completing an adventure, completing a story mission, or just being in the world and doing cool stuff, gives you the rewards you need to feel like, well, that was time well spent. I had some fun, I did some cool stuff, and I earned something. My character's just that much more powerful, or interesting, mm -hmm. or unique. And that's our goal. Yeah. We want Destiny to reward the time that you spend in it a little bit more generously. Yeah. We're actually going to switch over to the, the second file that I've provided here in just a second to okay. talk about Lost Sectors. Yeah. Now, Lost Sectors are probably one of my favorite experiences because you're actually able to explore the world, but then you go into this whole unique area. Sometimes it's very unique, sometimes it's still similar in mm -hmm. architecture to mm -hmm. uh, the, the area that you're in, but it's just you feel like you're finding a secret, mm -hmm. I guess, is the mm -hmm. best way that I could describe it. Yes. Um, what was it like designing these for the team? Like, what were, your, what were your goals providing this experience to players? Our goal was to make sure that the world of Destiny had, at a glance, interesting places to explore, enemies to fight, but that there was something layered in there where mm -hmm. there was another place to go to experience the mystery of the world. It was a world, like you said, that felt like it had secrets mm -hmm. and give you these moments of discovery, moments that make players feel powerful, mo moments that make players feel clever, uh, moments that make players feel like they're outsmarting their enemy and infiltrating a space that, that was their secret hideout. And now I'm coming in here with my golden gun and I'm you know, all guns blazing into this environment. You take down the boss and you get to steal their treasure. Don't shoot that red barrel. <laughs> Yeah, I jumped over it. It was there safe, it was yeah, safe, very, we're okay. Very good, but you know, the European dead zone has a lot more lurking below the surface than meets the eye when you first put your boots on the ground there. Mm -hmm. You know, there are tunnels, there are caves, there are you know, forgotten passageways through buildings. And the idea that you know, as you're walking around in those destinations, there's fun stuff to do, but if you drill down just a little bit deeper, there is so much more to Destiny 2 that you can experience, and these things, as you can see right here, if you commit to them, and if you win, and if you defeat those enemies, bam, ton of loot, more loot. And we want that loot to be relevant to your exploration of your own potential, mm -hmm. so that when you equip that stuff, it's worthy. It's something that you want. It's, yeah. You don't get this stuff and immediately trash it. You need these things. Help you climb that ladder. Help you climb that ladder. That's mm -hmm. your next milestone mm -hmm. in becoming that legend. Mm -hmm. So right now we're uh, transitioning into an adventure. Now these are little pieces of lore that you get to experience in the world. Yep. Uh, how many, uh, well, you're not going to say how many there are, nope. but uh, what's the experience like taking the story and putting them in these little adventures? Mm -hmm. The Story that we're telling in Destiny, obviously, the one that we've talked the most about. You have is the overarching narrative. The overarching narrative yeah. is that the Red Legion has come to Earth. They brought the full force of the Cabal professional military to steal our traveler and to rob us of our powers. That's the story that we're telling in Destiny 2. But there are all these other stories about the European dead zone. And why is it dead? And you know what, what happened on Titan? What happened on Io? What mm -hmm. happened on Nessus? Who are the people that we meet in these environments? Why are they still there? Uh, what motivates them? What do they want you, what purpose do they want for you to serve in those environments? Because mm -hmm. not everything that's happening in Destiny is about confronting Gaul. It's a big world that we've built here. And there are so many other side agendas of different characters in the game. Uh, you know, restoring communications or, you know, 
other things that I'm just not going <laughs> to tell you about. This is so hard. This is so hard because we've, we've held back so many nice discoveries for the players to enjoy while they play the game. Mm -hmm. We're two weeks out from people to be able to discover those things for themselves. But I think the essential experience of adventures is learning more about the ex places that you're discovering. Well, you know one thing, Deej, I am so bummed because I really didn't like how I designed my Titan in Destiny 2. Am I stuck with that appearance? <laughs> so That's a softball. Yeah, we that's call a that softball. In the yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, we're, we're creating an experience with Destiny mm -hmm. that needs to serve different types of players. Mm -hmm. uh, you have people like you and I who have invested hundreds, uh, if not thousands of hours into these characters, into these adventures. Mm -hmm. When we have other people who are going to join this community for the first time. Mm -hmm. I've talked to a lot of people here at Gamescom. Uh, you know, they're all in, they can't wait to play the game on the PC, mm -hmm. or they feel like this is really is a fresh start and they can join a community, whereas before they felt like the whole experience was a mile down the road. Mm -hmm. Destiny is going to serve those different players in different ways. So when you and I play through the game, the game will remember us. The yeah. game will know the things that we did and will be fed little moments of context uh, that are evidence to the fact that we're veterans of this community. We have a legacy of, as heroes in this world. Mm -hmm. The new players will get their own context. They'll be introduced to these enemies for the first time. Mm -hmm. Now, the things that the game remembers about you is account-based. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that when I arrive, in Destiny 2, mm -hmm. and if I want to create a new warlock, let's say, uh, I can create a new warlock, I can build a face for it that isn't the blue exo face that I have now. Yeah. I can give myself a different exo face or I can give myself a human face mm -hmm. if I wanted to, and it's still gonna know that I'm Deej. Mm -hmm. It's still gonna know that my clan is TTL Gunslingers. Mm -hmm. It's still gonna know that I did all of the things that were important to me throughout my original Destiny adventure, mm -hmm. and I'm still gonna benefit from those things, yeah. from the emblems that we've talked about, mm -hmm. and from some of the other winks and homages to how awesome I've been in Destiny <laughs> uh, that we haven't even really talked about that much yet. There's actually a whole new community coming into Destiny, the PC community, and at yes. Gamescom, there was an interview done where they said that text chat is going to be included in the PC version. How do you think that's going to change that version of the game? God, we'll see. Uh, you know, what I know is that I'm very close to the point where I get to stop talking about Destiny, mm -hmm. and I get to stop setting expectations about Destiny and predicting what will happen once the community gets to play, and I get to start to listen again. Mm -hmm. So. We're going to have uh, an opportunity to get acquainted with this PC community. Uh, we're going to get an opportunity to welcome them into the Bungie community. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're talking on a regular basis to our friends at Blizzard. Uh, the PC players demand a different type of experience. Yeah. Uh, they are used to having a lot more control over the way they play. Uh, you know, and we're putting a tool set in their hands that meets them in the way that they like to experience their entertainment. Mm -hmm. So whether it's mapping keyboard controls or whether it's adjusting mouse sensitivity or adjusting field of view or being able to adjust their own equipment to take advantage of uncapped frame rates, yeah. you know, putting a frame rate counter in the game so that it can have access to the information that they want, it is a different experience. It's a different type of approach to being a gamer. Mm -hmm. And we think that Destiny is a great game no matter which platform we put it on. A complete experience that ma maximizes everything that device is capable of. But you have to create different types of experiences for different types of players. And that's really what Destiny's been about. Whether it's you're a social gamer or a competitive gamer or a cooperative gamer uh, or somebody who loves to explore and have a yeah. t story told to them. Now we're diversifying by platform instead of diversifying by genre. So you so. brought up, uh, you know, gamers that have tons of hours in, and uh, you brought up new players and how their dialogue is going to be different in the the story. Um, how how do you develop a game for people like me that want to be rewarded that have a thousand hours in Destiny One mm -hmm. versus somebody who's never played the game? I think in that respect, the development is similar, mm -hmm. and that's one of the great things about Destiny Two is that new players and legacy players from our community have the same essential story arc. Mm -hmm. We're both in the city when it comes under attack. We both go limping back out into the wild to acquire new forms of combat, new armor and weapons. Mm -hmm. And that's the one thing that we will have in common is we get to have our characters busted down to the most elemental 
mortal level and then built back up from there. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we can relate to. We have new things to explore, new things to acquire, and that's really what Destiny's yeah. been about. Over the course of the past three years, my Warlock has gone from a full Dead Orbit set to a full Iron Banner set, you know, mm -hmm. pepper in some exotics, you know, like mm -hmm. Light Beyond Nemesis or Void Fang Vestments, not at the same time, yeah. of course. But um, we are giving people an opportunity to meet new characters along the way. We'll all meet Devrim K at the same time. Yeah. And Devrim K will be one of the arbiters of our adventure. He'll give us our marching orders. He'll acknowledge our pr progress and he'll give us some of the things that will make our guardians more powerful. Yeah. I already know every version of Devrim K. I know all the different <laughs> vendors. I have all my favorite armor items all picked out. Yeah. And I'm going to be building the perfect suit of warlock armor built around the exotic that I know is going to be the centerpiece of it. Awesome. Well, hey, we can, t we can talk Destiny 2 all day. You know me. Yep. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. We have to wrap it up, but yeah. do you want to do the outro? Guardians out. Not, not, yeah.